One of our most popular videos is our Canadian rescues, and we just got this box in today. Come check this out. Okay, we open up the box. You see it's both in English and French. That's we, we, we. You know it's uh, from the Quebec area. And whenever you see the oven mitts, again, something for the missus, uh, he always puts, our exporter always puts the Lugers into oven mitts. Let me unpack these and lay them out for you. Okay, you see we have most, I was going to say mostly Lugers. They're actually all Lugers. Um, Randy just informed me that he has an important date in about 15 minutes. So I'm going to hit these really fast. And then if there's any detail that I want to go over, I'll do that a little later. Here, this one stands out. This is a Vopo, not a Mofo. This is a Vopo, East German uh, import. And what the heck that happened here? Now, this is matching to the gun. The magazine matches, everything matches. But for some reason, that is spray paint. So whoever buys this, here's my recommendation. Remove the paint, put a new bluing on there. It would at least look better than it does now. But that's a Vopo. Uh, originally was a, uh, 1911. Oh, look at that. There's a Mauser part. So put together from parts. Let's keep moving. I love this one a lot because this is a 1937 Krigoff from Canada, rescued from the Crusher. It does have a Krigoff magazine, but not matching. Uh, the finish on this is about 98%, though. I want to show you one thing on this that's really unique to Canada. When I take the grip off, proper um, Krigoff grip, uh, it does have the name of a flight leader in the Royal Canadian Air Force. I'll do a little bit of research on that, get that story, but let's get that out of the way. Uh, here's something unique. I guess you know what that is. Now, this is dated. I'm wondering, this leather is over 100 years old, and I'm wondering if this is repro. Um, I'm not a, I've never seen these before, so I'm not sure what they're supposed to look like, but this is dated. Uh, 1915, Berlin, 1915. My guess is this is repro because the snaps look new. There's a snail drum and I believe they hold 32 rounds. It's written right here. Yeah, 32 rounds. Snail drum, nine millimeter. That one is imperial proof, so it went to the military right there. Uh, but this is 100% uh, real, authentic. Let's keep moving. Pretty rare a gun. We've talked about these before. This is a Vickers. Uh, this was a British contract. It went to the uh, Dutch East Indies. That's the unit marking. So Germany contracted with Vickers in England to put together these Lugers, and then they sent them off to the Dutch East Indies. Many of them were captured by the Japanese, uh, used pretty hard, and therefore they're usually in bad shape. This one is uh, about average for uh, one, of the, one of these variations, but that's pretty rare. Here's something you almost never see. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of you who want to hear more information about this, and uh, we'll get to it. But in 1936, uh, it's a three-digit code, so 615. The magazine is 615. And look at this 1936 holster. And what does it have right here? 615. So, and it also has a tool, which is proper. So all correct with matching magazine and a matching holster. Okay, here I have an artillery rig, again, rescued from Canada. Can you imagine destroying this gun? Uh, so we're glad to have it in. Uh, it does have an imperial proof, so the stock is correct. And the stock, if you take the boot off, that's the boot. That's what they look like inside. It's always like a red material in there. But um, this is matching to the gun, so we want to take a look at that. You can see 7621. And when I look at the gun itself... It's a nice artillery, 7621, plenty of halo under there, 7621, and then the magazine, 7621. It is a little chip here, and it ha also has a little bit of a chip right there, not too bad, but all matching 1917 artillery. Look at the condition, absolutely beautiful, with a matching magazine and a matching stock. Okay, uh, this is an interesting one, 1940, 42 code is for Mauser. So a 1940 uh, Luger that went uh, to the military, it does have Krigoff grips on it. If you read my book, here's a picture of it, the Third Reich Luger book, uh, you will see that in 1940 there was a, a very short period of time where they ran out of grips. They called their buddies at Krigoff and said, hey, 
can you send us a couple thousand grips? And so there is a serial range where it is proper for them to have these Krigoff grips. It doesn't mean this gun went to the Luftwaffe. We can't say that. We can just say it was one of those contract guns and it does fall in the right serial range. Okay, this one is very rare and there's uh, a dozen guys right now heading for the phone to call me and say, I'll take it. Uh, this is uh, a quite rare KU marked Luger. Now again, in the Third Reich Luger book, I, I spend a chapter talking about KUs and I give a lot of information, more than I can cover now, especially if Randy wants to be on time for his appointment. Um, so I won't go into the detail, but these were put together. Uh, most people think they went to the Luftwaffe. They do have a Luftwaffe stamp right here. That's a late war Luftwaffe stamp, probably put together from parts. There's also a Luftwaffe stamp right here. So the final proofs were Luftwaffe proofs, and we believe these were Mauser parts put together probably by Krigoff and then uh, shipped off to the Luftwaffe. So KU Luger, one more thing, this has a matching magazine. They only numbered them for a very short period of time because when they did, uh, when they did try to number them, it would often chip the Bakelite. So most of them will just have a blank bottom. This one has a matching number magazine and the grips match. I previously showed you this 1940-42 with the uh, Krigoff grips. Uh, there's a second 1940, Mauser made. Uh, this one, however, is a standard wooden grip, serial number, non-matching magazine. Still a very beautiful uh, piece of war history. Uh, this tag gets in the way, but this is for import reasons, and ATF does come check this, so I don't want to remove it. Um, but that's the back strap, a beautiful looking gun. Here's from, one from World War I, a 1915 DWM, all matching except for the magazine. It does have a proper magazine. Uh, the last two, uh, 1915, so two 1940s in this batch, two 1915s in this batch. Uh, this one, the side plate has a little schmutzy on it. Uh, people like it when I say that. 6550, and this is 6550. So this one also, uh, this one has a matching mag. Uh, so this is a detractor. Uh, so here's a 15 with a better side plate, non-matching mag. This one has a little bit of corrosion there, but a matching mag. Both are very desirable. And the very last one before we run out the door, uh, this is a G-Date. So this is 1935, made by Mauser. G-Date Luger went to the German military. All matching numbers throughout the gun. Beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, grip straps. This one has a bit of wear here. But beautiful gun, all matching, except for the magazine. The magazine goes to a later gun because it has a blued tube and it should be nickeled. So all matching except for the magazine. Hey, that was fast and furious, but that's the way I like it. And we're gonna get these guns out as soon as possible, get them on the website. Uh, if you're interested in one of them, you can always uh, email us, and if they're still available, we can let you know the uh, pricing and how you can purchase one. Once again, thanks for watching, and thanks to our Canadian brothers who are taking, uh, taking the opportunity to get some of these guns out of, out of Canada and into the United States. We hope and pray for the day that they can go back, uh, back home where they belong, and uh, make, if you're Canadian, get out and vote. And if you're Randy, good luck tonight.